Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to Mathematics with Shahab Yaqub. We are looking at an S1 paper that is Probability and Statistics 1, October, November 2011, Variant 62. So our focus is on permutation and combination. So let's look at the question. The question says, Part A, Jeff wishes to plant 25 flowers in a flower bed. He can choose from 15 different geraniums. Focus on the word different. 10 different roses, 8 different lilies. He wants to have at least minimum of 11 geraniums and also to have the same number of roses and lilies. Find the number of different selections of flowers he can make. Now, first of all, the first part, as you have realized it by now, it's about combination. And let me underline a few things. So first of all, I want to underline that I want to plant a total of 25 flowers. That's the first thing. And the next thing is that we can choose from 15 different geraniums and 10 different roses and 8 different lilies. And the minimum quantity is that at least 11 geraniums, that is a must. And also to have the same number of roses and lilies. Find the number of different selections. So now what we will do is that in the first part, we will write part A over here. We will write geranium and roses and lilies. And let me draw some straight lines so that I can comfortably write down the answer right over here. So let me write over here how many geraniums are there? 15. And let me just close this. So that is 15. And then we have 10 different roses and 8 different lilies. Now we want minimum 11 geraniums. So therefore, let me write 11 over here. The difference between 25 and 11 is how much? 14. 14 divided by 2, that is 7 each. Now, if I choose the next number, which is 12, will it work out? I don't think so. Because 25 minus 12 is 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. You cannot split a flower. So therefore, just erase this option. Not the whole thing, just this option that needs to be erased. That means if I write 8 and 8 over here, that is 16. So 25 minus 16, that gives me 9. But again, that is not correct. Why? Because I need at least 11 geraniums. So again, remove this. That means increase the number of geranium to 13. 25 minus 13 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6 each. Increase the number of geraniums to 15. 25 minus 15 is how much? 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5 each and that's it because the maximum number of geraniums we have is 15. Now what will we do? We will select the geranium from the geranium and the roses from the roses and similarly the lilies from the lilies. So let me write over here 15 C 11 into 10 C 7 into 8 C 7. Similarly, 15 C 13 into 10 C 6 into 8 C 6. Similarly, 15 C 15 into 10 C 5 into 8 C 5. Let's have a double check. 15 and 11, that's right over here. 10 and 7, that's right over here. 8 and 7, that's right over here. Take your time, write it out comfortably. 15 C 13, 10 C 6 and 8 C 6. All good, all clear. 15 C 15, 10 C 5, 8 C 5. All good, all clear. Now let's use a calculator at this particular stage. So if I use the calculator, the first answer is a big number that's coming out to be 1310400. The next number is 617400. The last one is 14112. Therefore, I need the total of all this. And that comes out to be a big number, which is 1941912. 1941912, that is the answer of this particular part. So that's how the first part is done, which is about combination, selection. 
So selection, when you hear this word, you should know that this is about NCR. So order does not make a difference. So that is the rule for selection. Now this part is done. Let's move to the second part. Now in the second part, let's read it. That is find the number of different ways in which nine letters of the word green gauge can be arranged. So this is the word arranged. If exactly two of the G's are next to each other. Now first of all, let me write it down. G R double E N G A G E. So what do we have? We have three G's over here. We have three E's over here. And then we have an R and an N. And let me just write this. So this is R, this is N, this is A. That's nine letters. Now they are asking for exactly two of the G's are next to each other. Now this is considered as one of the trickiest question in permutation that ever came. No one can predict the future, but till now, this is one of the most difficult ones that ever came. So exactly two of the G's are next to each other. Now, uh, the first thing, let me do it by two different methods. So method number one. If I focus on method number one, let me make a box of two G's. So let me first make a box of two G's. And I'll be writing the two G's over here. And what is left? Then I am left with a G. So let me put it on the sidelines. So let's ignore this. And then I have these things, which is R, triple E, N, A. So let me write over here. That is R, N, A. And then we have triple E like this. Now what I'm trying to do is that let me get a thick marker a little bit more thicker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. There are eight possible spaces. And let me just create some more space for you people so you can look at it comfortably. So what I'm doing is that I'm just spacing it out which I should have done earlier but sooner the better and something like this okay so this is spaced out a bit more now in these spaces i can fit in one of the g's but if i fit a g over here that won't be fulfilling this criteria because then three g's will be together if i fit a g over here that won't be fulfilling the criteria so let me put a cross over here. Let me put a cross over here. This G can't go there. That means for this G, I have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces available. So I'll write six P one for this particular G. That thing is done. What about these things? One and two and three and four and five and six and seven. In how many ways can they be arranged? They can be arranged in seven factorial ways. Don't forget to divide by three E's for three factorial for the three E's. Don't divide by three E's. That's not possible. Divide by, don't divide by three factorial. That's for the three E's. And last but not the least, what is happening inside the box? Inside the box, there are two alphabets, the two G's, but since they both are identical, divide by two factorial. So this is truly an out-of-box question. Out-of-box type question. I mean, very different. It's about the space concept, but then there is limitation on the space concept. So let me go over it again. We want exactly two of the G's next to each other. We don't want the third one. So I'm doing it by the space concept. So this is space concept. That's the terminology I use with a little bit of limitation. And this is truly out of the box. Let me focus on this. That is the box and it's out of the box. So now this is space concept with limitation. 
And what we have done is that we have grouped the two G's in a box. The rest of the letters, there are spaces between them, but the limitation is this, the G cannot be in these two places. This is a no-go area for that free G. And then we have R, N, A, triple E, and this box, that is seven factorial, divided by three factorial for the three E's, and nothing is happening inside the box, and six P1, that is for the spaces. So now if I use the calculator, this answer gives me a number 5040. That is the number of ways of doing this arrangement. Now some people are happy with this method. I think it's very conceptual, but there is also another way of doing the same thing. So I think I have a lot of space over here. And let me just draw a line over here. And let me move to method number two. Now, what is method number two? Method number two is, uh, let's first find out without any restriction. That is, how many letters are there, by the way? There are nine letters and then three G's and three E's are there. So that is nine factorial divided by three factorial for the E's, three factorial for the G's. Let me use a calculator and this comes out to be 10080. That is the answer. Another condition. What if three G's are together? That is also a possibility. So let me draw a box and let me write three G's inside. What is left? I'm left with three E's and I'm left with R and N and A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial for the E's. What is happening inside the orange box? Technically nothing. 3 alphabets, 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial for the G's. So when we do this calculation, this answer comes out to be 840. That is the answer for this part. What if there is a possibility that 3 G's are separated? Now let's separate out the three G's. So how many letters are there? All together nine. Therefore there will be how many spaces? Seven spaces. So let me write it down. So therefore there are three E's and there is R and N and A and the spaces are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In these seven, we have to fit in the three G's. So therefore, seven P three, but three G's are identical, divide by three factorial. What about these six things, alphabets? They can arrange themselves in six factorial ways, divide by three factorial for the E's. All good, all clear. This answer is coming out to be how much? 4,200. Now let's recap the information. We are looking for a scenario in which two of the G's are next to each other. But when we arrange them without any restriction, there is a possibility that the three G's are together. There is a possibility that three G's are separated. Now someone can say this, what if two G's are together? Of course, we are looking for this one. What if two G's are separated? There is already a third G that is separated. That means this thing is the same thing as this one. So basically we have listed down everything. We have listed down without any restriction. We have listed out three E's together. We have listed down three G's are separated. Therefore, last but not the least, what are we looking for? We are looking for that two G's are together. So therefore, without any restriction, minus the three G's together, which is 840, minus the three G's are separated, which is 4200. And guess what is the answer that's coming out? This answer is coming out to be 5040. And this is all done and dusted. Now, this is how the examiner report has explained it. And I hope you can understand how they have arrived at this answer. Uh, I just want to focus on this, that the final number of ways is 5040 ways. So I have done this particular question, one of the most difficult questions that ever came in. 
our S1 paper related to permutation. So this particular question, both the parts are done and dusted. Stay tuned for more.